Welcome to Lab 7 of Compute 127. In this lab, we're going to be looking mainly at how to test your program. So in this lab, we're going to test you on how well you can write test cases to discover bugs uh, in existing code. That's kind of a uh, interesting uh, twist on a usual lab uh, because in this case, we're giving you buggy versions of code and you're expected to write testing functions that will test those buggy versions and kind of expose the bugs. Um, so this is along the lines of what you've been doing all along, which is writing code and then testing it. Um, and in this lab, we actually are going to reward you for writing testing code. That's a primary uh, thing in this lab. Uh, there's a couple of uh, extra tasks that are not about testing, but uh, they're related to the other tasks. In the, they're about the same data structure. Okay, so I assume that you have downloaded all the files for Lab 7. And uh, the first concept that you need to know about in order to solve this lab is the concept of a linked list. I think you have seen linked list uh, you know, before. Uh, at least in Compute 125. Uh, so in this particular lab, we are going to use a, a data structure for a linked list that contains, which represent, basically used to store a list of integers, uh, integer values. Uh, and it has some advantages uh, and disadvantages over using a C array to store a sequence of integers. Um, so before we go any further, you should uh, take a look at some of these, uh, uh, the guide for linked lists on the web page. And so you can see that there is a list, uh, a list type, list underscore T. And this represents the entire linked list. So each element is represented by a different structure called element underscore T. Um, so the list underscore t structure contains two components, a head and a tail. And if it's an empty list, which is what we get when you first create a list, then they both should be set to null. So the first thing to do is, uh, you should do is look through the file list.h. And list.h contains the precise description of the linked list that we will be using in lab 7. And it's important to read the whole file. So here it says a list is comprised of a single header. Uh, the header is list underscore t. And the header contains pointers to the first and last element in the list. Each element is of type element underscore t. And you can see that list underscore t has two pointers. The first pointer points to the head of the list. And the second pointer points to the last element of the list, or the tail. Uh, this allows you to quickly jump to the end of the list um, and uh, add an extra element. Um, and the first pointer allows you to uh, quickly get to the head of the list and traverse the entire list. So the linked list is composed of these two data these two data types, list underscore t, which is the entire list consisting of a pointer to the head and a pointer to the tail of the list. And then each element of the list is of type element underscore t. Each element has a value, which is an integer, and a pointer to the next element. So each of these pointers means, so there's one pointer here, another one here, another one here. So all of these pointers have to point to the right thing. And the file list.h actually tells you um, the specification for each of these functions. So list create, for example, should uh, create a list which is empty. Um, so in this case, uh, if you look at this figure, that's an example of an empty list. If you um, want to create an element, uh, you can do so by um, of calling element create and element create creates a pointer so allocates a memory for a element type uh, here and it takes an argument which is an integer and sets value to be that integer right so 
um, when you append a list, um, it uh, takes an integer and a list and adds an element uh, to the end of the list. So notice that certain things have to happen. The first time you add an element, the head has to point to this new element, the tail has to point to the element because there's only one element. So head and tail both point to the same thing. It's very important that the next value always be null. Right, so this is uh, the only way that you know that you're at the last element. So this is important. When you add another element, so now the head points to the first element, which contains a value 2, and you've added a new element, so the new element has a value 11. So this time, the next pointer points to the next element here, the second one, and the next pointer here points to null. The head is pointing to the first element, the tail is pointing to the last element, which is the second element in this list. And here's an example of one more addition. So you can see I added another element here, the value is 3, and now the next pointers all point to their next elements, and this last element points to null. The head points to the first one, and the tail points to the last one. Let's look at one example of a bug that uh, you can catch by writing some testing code. So this, uh, this is uh, t5.c that has been provided to you. It's an attempt at writing a uh, list um, API. So all of the functions in list.h are implemented in t5.c, but one or more of these functions has a bug in it and what you're trying to do in writing your code uh, you're going to be modifying main.c and inserting tests that would catch the bugs that are in each of these files so t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 and t6.c each have a bug in them at least one bug and what you want to do is write a uh, uh, write some testing code in main.c that will catch all of the bugs. So some will be easy, some might be hard. You want to figure out uh, how to catch these bugs. The easiest way to uh, think about this task is to go through and look at list.h and look at each of the definitions in list.h. So list header, you know, what what are the two elements of list header and what they should be initialized to. You want to check that. So for every function, there will be some requirements. The requirements are listed as comments above the function. And so what you want to do is write a test that tests each one of those requirements. And once you do that, you know that you'll be catching all the bugs because each of the requirements will te will be telling you what is expected of an implementation of list uh, of these list functions. So if you go back to t5.c, um, uh, here's a function list create, and list create is has some requirements. It's supposed to create the header for the list, and notice that it's just returning. Uh, the malloc and it doesn't really follow the requirements. If you look at the requirements, it says list create should return a pointer to a new header for an empty list or null if memory allocation fails. Um, so now if you look at what's happening here, it returns malloc. Um, it does not really uh, initialize the head and the tail to be null. It just sort of hopes that that will happen rather than explicitly setting them to null. So let's look at a way of trying to catch this. So if you look at uh, main.c, main.c cat is calling list create and it says if l pointer to head, which means that l pointer to head is not null. So if l pointer head, if the head is a null, uh, then this condition uh, will not be true, right? So if actually there is a pointer value stored in the head, that means it says 
it prints out the error message. Uh, it doesn't matter what you put in the error message. Uh, what matters is that you return one. Uh, uh, you can optionally exit using an assert, but it's preferable if your testing code uh, does not just crash, but actually, uh, or use, you know, don't use assert uh, uh, for these cases of catching bugs. You wanna put the error message and then if it returns a one, it's assumed, if your program returns a one, uh, we assume that you've caught the bug. And if you return a zero, which means you didn't catch, you know, you didn't catch the bug. The assumption is that every one of these implementations, T1 uh, through T6.C, all of them have at least one bug. So you should, you should be returning one for each one of them. Um, so that's, that's a goal. So this one says, if if the head wasn't null, if the tail was, uh, if the head was not null, if the tail was not null, then it wasn't a very, it wasn't a correct implementation of list create. And the reason, the way that it does it is by writing some stuff in memory and freeing it. And the next time you malloc it, uh, the convention is that you get back a block that you just uh, freed and which has been initialized to this uh, sort of value. So it's not going to be null just because the uh, the compiler, the C compiler is not going to make it null for you. So it gets a piece of memory which has been set to a different value that's not null. So this is why this uh, particular test will catch the bug in t5.c. Um, so there might be, you should look through t5.c and see if there's other bugs. Um, and you should look through the other uh, t1, t2, t3, and so on until t6.c to find the bugs uh, in them. Like I said, you can either look at the code and find the bug, or you can look at the requirements and just target each requirement with, a, with an if statement or a check uh, and if the check is not true, you return a one and print out error message for your benefit. Uh, so you understand which error was found. And test seven uh, in this lab is quite easy. All you have to do is write the correct implementation of all the functions that are described in list.h. Um, so notice that your correct implementation should pass all the test cases that you wrote for the buggy implementations that we provided for you in tasks one through six. So task seven is pretty straightforward. Just give the corrected versions of each of the functions um, that uh, implement all the functions in list.h. Task eight is a extra task that is a function called list sort. That's what you have to write. And it implements a linked list sorting uh, algorithm and uh, make sure that your, you know, your file t8.c contains uh, this function called list underscore sort, and you can't sort of change anything in list.h. So you should include list.h, and you can use all the functions that you've defined uh, for task seven. So one of the things you might have to do is to modify the make file uh, in order to do this. Uh, and when you modify the make file, make sure that for task eight, you also include your correct implementation, which is uh, going to be in t7.c, assuming you've done task seven already. And here's just a real quick look at uh, the make file that you will need uh, if you want to use make for t7 and t8. So notice that the T7 line is very similar to the other uh, T6, T5, and so on. And uh, this particular uh, symbol, dollar at sign, just says that the output file is going to be the same as the part that's before the colon. Again, make sure that you uh, put a tab character on this line, otherwise make file will be unhappy. And the other thing you need to do for T8 is to make sure that you include T7. So T7 has to be in the compile line at least. I mean, it's optional that you wanna put it here. 
this line basically says if any of these files change then you should recompile T8 so it sort of saves you some compilation time if all of these files are the same as what you compiled last time then it won't recreate the binary and these three files are compiled together so the main function is in main.c and then t7.c contains all the list functions and t8.c contains a list sort function um, so this is how you would write a make file and then I've added an optional clean uh, which just removes the binary again this line has to have a tab character you cannot put spaces there alright good luck with lab 7